Bangladesh is going through a state of reform and revolution at the moment. Thousands of students across Bangladesh staged protests and sit-ins on Monday and 9th of April after clashes at, at the country's top university left at least 100 people injured. Police fired rubber bullets and tear gas at the Dhaka University students fighting what they complain are discriminatory quotas for government jobs in favour of special groups. It was one of the biggest protests faced by Prime Minister uh, Sheikh Hasina uh, in her decade in power. Uh, following the violence that erupted on Sunday and continued to the early hours of Monday, classes at the Dhaka University ground uh, halted as thousands occupied the main square chanting reform, reform. Students at the state-run universities at uh, Chittagong, uh, Kluna, uh, Barisal, uh, Rangpur and uh, Savar uh, also boycotted classes and staged sittings. More than a thousand students joined the demonstrations, uh, said Atta Rahman, uh, a, who was a protester in Savar, where the university is located. A Dhaka University students said they would continue their fight, uh, saying that they won't leave the streets unless our demands are met. This is all about dignity. We are not afraid of bullets. Another student, uh, Simon Rahman, said quotas meant young uh, graduates missed out on government jobs. Uh, so he said that we want a merit-based society, uh, we want equal opportunities for all, which is perfectly valid and, if anything, it makes sense. However, to understand why they're doing this, we have to go back and look at why. So, the students are angry at the government's decision to set aside 56% of civil service jobs for families of veterans from the 1971 War of Independence. Now, this leaves the rest of the country fighting for 44% of the jobs. Though, understandably, this privilege is important to uh, value the sacrifice of those who fought for the country, uh, it's still an unfair advantage. And that 56% allocated spot is not filled, then it remains empty and inaccessible to the rest of the population. As a result, and rightfully so, all the university and school students in Bangladesh have been quietly appealing to, the lower, to lower this percentage to around 10 to 20 percent. They have been marching and speaking up for it since February, uh, but they've received hardly any media coverage. And in fact, in researching this, it's been very difficult to find really any information at all. Now, one thing is clear, and when you look at something like this, is that for a revolution, tends to be successful if those who aren't directly effective still care because above all always always be capable of feeling deeply any injustice committed against anyone anywhere in the world now thankfully though they were outnumbered though they might have been on their own they still succeeded. You see, in revolution, sometimes if you don't have the majority, or you don't have the widespread media coverage that you may need, you can still win. Because with your determination and passion, it's the strongest weapon against injustice. And this is exactly what happened here. And as a result, the government responded by getting rid of the quota altogether, meaning everyone has access to education. And we've talked about education before and about how, how great and strong and needed it is for everyone. For anyone to develop, you know, individually or as a society, you need education. It is honestly so important and that's, you know, when you look at the UN, that is exactly something that they look at in developing countries, looking at education, because without it, there isn't the opportunities to move forwards. And so well done, especially to those people who fought with their determination and passion to get what they wanted, and they have.